Since early spring of 2019, my skyline has been wrapped red for three years with a simple Itasha livery. I was coming up in my fifth year of ownership in March 2023, so I decided I wanted to change it up with a new color. Main reason was because I wanted a new Itasha that would be bigger and better since I felt the first one was small and too simple for me. So with the new change being planned out, I wanted to make a video documenting the whole makeover. In the middle of February, I brought the Skyline over to my friend's shop, Dream Killer Auto Boutique, where they specialize in vinyl wraps and paint protection film. They'll be the ones who will be wrapping my car once I get it all prepped. On the first day of teardown, we didn't have any issues peeling off the red vinyl, especially when several people were there to lend a helping hand. As a matter of fact, these guys had a lot of fun tearing my car apart. They took advantage of drawing on my car. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I'm just surprised you didn't roll a dick on it. And had oh no care for looking the bottom <laughs> off at all. You don't get to do this often. <laughs> My paint was really bad underneath, so it didn't really matter. Speaking of paint, the black stuff that's peeling off with the vinyl is actually a type of dip by Super Wrap. In short, it's pretty much an advanced plasti dip, and you can use a clear coat on top that can be buff and polish like paint it actually works but i didn't do it correctly nor did i have enough layers on it to make it pillable so i'm sure a lot of people would roast me for doing it and i completely understand but i do regret it it's in the past now so can't do anything about it anyhow back to the car in just under an hour we were able to get all the vinyl off a lot of it was peeled off in big pieces thankfully i also tried to salvage the zero two vinyl as best as i could I actually ended up slapping them both on my bedroom wall as a memorabilia. So, here it is in its former ugly self. I think it actually looks way worse than when I first bought the car. And so, preparations began with the first night of Pinoy and I sanding the car. The old paint that was left behind has a rough texture to it, so to get it smooth, we started with 400 grit thinking it would be enough. Found out we were wrong, as the 400 grit didn't cut the paint enough to get it smooth at all. The texture of the old paint was still showing, and we could still feel the hard edges that we ran our fingers along the body. We know the vinyl needs to have a smooth, clean surface for it to stick, technically it still needs a good layer of clear to lay on, however, I've done the research and saw that vinyl can stick the primer. But again, it needs to be prepped very well for it to stick. So we have some trial and error to do so we can figure out what works. By this time, I bought some stronger paper at 180 grit and it's been working so much better. All the hard edges were starting to fade away. So now we're getting the body to be smooth again. Although I wasn't exactly sure how much to sand down. Some parts were getting down to the original primer other times it was starting to show metal but the goal was to feather all hard edges and go over each entire panel so nothing would show up in the vinyl once placed on also at the same time Pinoy started on the hood as i wanted to get some dents on it fixed Feel it a little bit, but it's not bad. Where it's gonna like it's be good. noticeably wavy when it's out. The worst part was this part. I don't know why. I just it's, it's hard. When in doubt, it'll work. Always. <laughs> we'll get it. Pinoy began prepping the hood for primer after he fixed the dents the day before. We're no body and paint pros, but he has more experience with this type of work than I do. So I just let him handle it. As all I could really do was sand the body of the car. After he got the edges taped, he cleaned it with wax and grease remover. Then it was time to spray the primer. We used Sim products for its high build primer. The hood was lightly sprayed for its first coat. 
Then I believe two medium coats to get it fully covered. I don't know where I'm at with this video, but I'm at a good stopping point right now with the car that I've done a lot of work to. So here's an overview of all the things that I've been doing. Currently the car sits here right now. It's at uh, my buddy's shop. This is the Dream Killer Wraps in PPF. Been always usually with me, but I decided to come by here after work one day because the weather has been all over the place and it's been too cold for me and Pinoy to work outside. So finally, I've had somewhat of a good weather to do anything right at the moment. Car is all stripped down. Noy and I have done a lot of sanding to this car. And another thing I've been doing is I've taken out all the trim on the rear windshield and also the front windshield. But I've taken out all the trim, even the retainers that was in here. It was just all broken and stuff. You should see it from the video that I just been posting and stuff. Another thing I've tried to work on is the little rust spot that was here. I sanded as much as I could get, but without taking this glass out, I can't get all of it. I haven't figured out if I want to take all the glass out yet. I should because I still have some stuff on the windshield that I still need to get sanded out. Actually, I haven't sanded this front one or got all the stuff out of the front one, but I did get the rear one out. But I don't know what I'm going to do about new trim yet. I would like to buy a new trim, but I think I've calculated it up to like $1,400 buying it brand new for front and rear windshields, the retainer and the windshield kit. It's just a lot of money that I don't really have to spend right now. So I might be doing a universal trim that I've been seeing a lot of people do. I might have to call up a local glass guy to come up here and I don't know. I don't know how they do it. So I'm gonna have to call somebody. Everything has been sanded down with 180 grit. All smooth right now, kind of dirty at the moment. So the reason why I came here today is because some, about two weeks ago, been always been working on the hood, getting all the dents and stuff out. And then he got it to get it be primered. As you saw in the video today, I was wet setting this whole thing. Some of the primer is still coming off. I don't know if I'm gonna try and test the vinyl as is right now on the primer, or if I'm gonna spray, spray paint the hood black and also clear it and then buff and polish it as if, you know, just to get it smoothed out again, just for the vinyl wrap to actually adhere to something. And that's the update on the car. As I mentioned before, there were a lot of days we weren't able to work because of the cold weather. It also didn't help that we're not in daylight savings hour. With Pinoy and I both working our jobs until 5 p.m., sometimes we'd have at best an hour of daylight to do any work at all. Well, that's if we get any days that's warm. Now at this time, I was cleaning the hood with Dawn dish soap so that I could get rid of any grease that's left on it then clay barred it so any residue of primer dust isn't on the hood. I thoroughly cleaned it as best as I could because we were getting ready to do a full wrap test to find out if the vinyl is actually going to work or not. Sorry for the camera angle as I had my brother Brandon set it up. The hood wrap test was a success for the most part. Still had issues with primer dust coming up on the vinyl each time we lifted it up. And so the adhesive started wearing down. Later I solved that by sanding it up to 800 grit. It would probably be better between 1000 and 1500. This hood wrap test also helped me realize there were a few dents that were missed on the hood. But overall, we know this will work, so we'll move forward with it. Although the hood wrap test worked, that's when I learned some things that made me aware of other parts. The panels that were metal 
I'm sure we're going to work following the same procedure. However, the front and rear bumper covers were my next concern, as they are plastic and not in the best condition. I sanded as much as of the old paint as I could get off with the DA sander and using 180 grit. Some areas and curvatures I had to do it by hand. One example that was a pain is the embedded skyline name in the rear bumper. My fingers were hurting from this one, but it had to be done. Another I had were a few rock chips or bits missing on the front bumper. So I tried fixing it with plastic JB Weld, let it harden a few days, and again, smooth it with 180 grit. Also, I did the same to one of my rear valence pieces. Once the old paint on every piece was sanded with 180, I did it again with 320 grit, washed and cleaned off all the dust, and then primered everything to three coats if possible, depending on how many cans were purchased. I think at this point I had already used nearly eight cans, so some pieces were lucky to even get three coats, and I haven't even gotten to the body yet. These cans were costing me nearly $15 each, so I had to cheap out on primer for the body with Rust-Oleum <laughs> Satin Black. Get the, <laughs> get, the, get the little tape. The little booger. The little piece of shit. Can I focus on it? Come on, focus, you little bastard. No! Oh my god, you motherfucker ruined the whole thing. After the primer, I usually let it cure for at least 24 hours before sanding it with 400 grit. Sometimes I had issues with the primer where some areas weren't sanded enough, so it started cracking. I was told it had to do something with the chemicals between the old and new paint being in contact with each other. Regardless, I sanded those areas again, resprayed the primer, and moved on. Then instead of wet sanding, I dry sanded all the parts up to 800 grit. By then, it should be smooth after a thorough wash in clay bar, so it can be ready for vinyl application. Some of the body pieces should be ready to wrap now. The hood was the easiest, so again, we started with that. Long before I started this makeover, I had a color in mind that I wanted to do. Thanks to the Dream Killer Shop being a dealer with TinyBot, I chose to go with British Racing Green after seeing it from their sample book. It's a darker color than their chosen green, which I almost went with. But after seeing the available picks I found online, I wasn't exactly happy with it as I wanted the color to be darker. And so the British Racing Green won me over. Back in 2019, I was mainly wrapping my car for the first time and by myself with no prior experience. A friend had lent me his garage and taught me the basics with the hood, then told me I was on my own as he wanted me to do it. Still, there were times I had trouble like the bumper that I was struggling with, so he came to help me with those. But even for me wrapping a car alone, I still believe I did a great job. Of course, there were still flaws because of my lack of skill or due to the car's condition. For example, some of the hard edges of leftover paint would show through the wrap. That was a big issue I didn't want showing with the new wrap. So I made sure this wouldn't happen again as I sanded the car. And with the Dream Killer team doing the wrap instead of me, I was hopeful that this makeover would turn out amazing. I still had other pieces to prepare like my side skirts. While I was doing that, other parts of the car needed attention as well. I asked Pinoy to do the quarter glass trim piece in satin black. I have to say when this was finished, it may have been one of my top favorite parts of the car because it helped enhance the makeover so much more. Aside from the hood being done already. It was a crucial week because the first local car show was coming up the same weekend. 
Dream Killer was vendoring with a booth, so we wanted to have the car to be on display as an example of their work. But they have their own work to fulfill this week as well, so Pinoy and I got our hands on wrapping. We were able to get the doors and fenders done without a problem. Actually, there's a scratch on the left fender, but I'll talk about that later. So far, no huge issues were shown. We might get a tiny speck of dust somewhere, but that's inevitable. We'd stay up late, up to 3 a.m. sometimes. I still had to go to work at 7 a.m., but I think Pinoy was on vacation at this time, so it didn't bother him. At times, the Dream Killer guys would come to help out whenever they're free. Honestly, a lot of the flatter surfaces were what Pinoy and I did. Dream Killer took over when doing the big panels like the quarters and the front and rear bumper covers. thing that happened and set me in panic mode the roof peeled off so what happened was the vinyl on the roof was lifting from the excess vinyl on the passenger side quarter as Devin was adjusting on the pillars the roof had pulled almost all of the old paint completely off although that would have been great when I was sanding but this wasn't the time for it and I never predicted this was going to happen so the roof was ripped off and Devin finished the quarter Eventually, I replaced it with matte black vinyl as we were running out of the color to finish the rest of the car. Which also brings me to the next problem this week. We're out of vinyl. We only had enough vinyl left to finish the bumpers. None of the leftover scraps we had left could do the other pieces, which were the side skirts, rear valances, wing, and the roof again. <laughs> show I mentioned earlier was the next day so we had to get everything done on this night. Devin and Brandon were working on the rear bumper while I was putting the car back together. The vinyl stuck well thanks to an adhesion promoter called Probon used on every edge and body line. On the rear bumper I told Devin to leave the inlay area as that will be covered by the reverse lights and the car plate. Here's the front with the GTR front lip and carbon intercooler duct installed. We had one issue with the front due to my decision of wanting it done in one piece. The area where the front grille is normally held was patched, but not like many people will see that. Once the bumpers were installed, I switched out my wheels to put on my Rager Masters again and had the car back on the ground. Then we got the rocker piece wrapped on both sides under the doors. Essentially after that, the roof and mirrors were the last things left. The mirrors were actually sprayed semi-gloss black later that same night, and then I wrapped the roof matte black the next morning before leaving for the car show. Car show day is here, so I went to the shop early in the morning to get the roof wrapped and clean up the car. Not a whole lot is worth mentioning of this day, so to keep it short, we stopped at a gas station, I snapped a few pics on my phone, then we arrived at the car show and I just had to take a pic with Noise WRX. Later it rained and I got three shots of my car with a Z cam. Essentially my car is done with the makeover, but I have a few things I still need fixing. I found out my front corner lights weren't working because of the harness and connection, so I bought new ones from wiringspecialties.com, spliced up two wires, connected them, 
Then it was plug and play and now my lights are working again. Next were the exterior moldings that go against my windows. The originals were dry rotted and so I was able to buy OEM replacements from Z1 Motorsports. It came with new clipping mounts too so it was easy to put back in and secured. Since the side mirrors were also dry rotted and dirty, I bought a set of OEM side mirrors replacements from Z1 Motorsports as well. These were tricky to take off and put on again. They have 5 clipping points. I was actually scared to break it as I was forcing it to come apart. I don't have a trick or easy way of doing this so I just carefully use my finger strength to force it out. The first one I got out wasn't a problem. Even got the new mirror in and this was scarier because I thought I was going to break the glass as I pushed it down trying to get the clipping points to clamp. It wasn't until I installed the second mirror that the glass broke. I didn't want to order a new mirror so I just took the old glass, replaced the molding with a new one, carefully installed it without breaking, thankfully. And so this is what the door molding and new side mirror glass looks like. This day was when I wanted to get some photos and videos done. It was kind of like an official way for me to post on my social media to reveal the color change. Even though the daylight was starting to get longer, I was still fighting for time and trying to catch the sunset right after getting off work. So I went to this spot close to the shop and this is the video I previously made and uploaded before. Since the review photos and videos, I've received a lot of compliments about how much of a change my car has made. In reality, it's just a new color and missing some aero pieces. I'll talk more about this later, so moving on. The last thing I got fixed was the windshield moldings on both the front and rear. I called over Mr. Turtle from Turtle's Auto Glass to come to the shop and install some new ones. For the rear, he confidently got the glass out without a problem within 10 minutes. I was actually on my way to the shop at the time as he was removing it so I couldn't get any video but at least I took some pics. Prior to this he asked me to unplug the defrost harness so it wouldn't be cut during the glass removal if I hadn't done that. After he got the rear molding on the glass it easily went back in the car and it looks so much better than I thought it was going to be. As for the front he couldn't guarantee the glass would come out in one piece unless I was ready to risk it or had a backup ready. At the time, I've been seeing front windshields going anywhere from $1,500 to $2,000. I definitely don't have the money for that. I did find one that's supposed to be an OEM style replacement for $645 before shipping. However, I couldn't find much information about the company selling them, so I passed on it. But back to the front windshield, he ended up doing a makeshift molding by cutting a piece on top to length. Then thankfully I saved the OEM side moldings and he just reused them and had it glued in. So this is the result of it all. Honestly, for a total of $300, I couldn't be happier how this turned out. This is how my car currently is. I've just been enjoying the car, taking it out on some cruises, lunch, car events, the usual car guy stuff. Meanwhile, I was waiting on more vinyl to come in to finish the other aero pieces, but there were some problems getting it. The first issue was there is a certain lot number that came on the cardboard roll the vinyl was wrapped around in. Apparently, we threw it away, and without that number, there might be a color difference in a new roll since this color wasn't exactly mass produced. So in a way it was sort of a special color that was only offered through a dealer at the time, but 
Devin had sent a sample from the leftover scrap so TinyBot could replicate it and make us a new roll. After sending us a sample to confirm it's the same color, we gave the okay to have a small roll made and have it sent to us. Well, we received it and it's actually a shade lighter as you can see on the right side. This killed my motivation and it was just before my annual trip to Slamming of Gatlinburg as I really wanted the rest of the pieces done. So for the rest of the year, my car stayed looking like this and I was just unsure of what to do going forward. If you made it to the end of this video, I want to thank you all for watching. It took me a while to edit this video, try and figure out how to get it structured and all organized. Hopefully you found this video any bit interesting and entertaining to watch. Now let's move on to the next part, finalizing my thoughts and wrapping up this video. I'll try to make it short, hopefully. Overall, this whole project turned out amazing. The prep work that me and Pinoy did, I think we did amazing for what we know. And I'm quite sure there's a lot of better ways that could have been done. But for what we know, I think we did a great job. Dream Killer guys, they killed it on the wrap as well. But then again, we basically did half and half. They also wanted to be part of the project as well by wrapping the car. And especially the front and rear bumpers. I'm no good at that, so I let them handle that. As far as how the wrap's been holding up to this point, it's been really great. I was gonna get the car out at some point to show some of the issues, but it's too cold outside. So right now it's just been staying at the shop. I just went over there to get a few shots. One of the issues that does show up that I hate about is the rear panel on the passenger side. There's a couple bubble spots on the body line coming up a little bit, but I'm pretty sure it's due to the primer coming back up or we just didn't sand it really well for it to stick on, which is probably a mixture of both. Another spot is the front bumper near the air duct on the driver's side. We kind of miscalculated the inlays for the air ducts. Whenever we put the main piece on, we had to stretch it over really far and it basically just broke and tore it right there. But there was a couple panels that I wanted to redo on the car, as you saw earlier that I mentioned. I received the wrong color wrap to try and finish the rest of the car with the rest of my aero pieces, which is just the side skirt, rear valances, and the GTR rear wing. But again, got the wrong color. That month before leaving for Slamming of Gatlinburg, I was too busy with client work doing some photos and video stuff. We've actually had the wrap for about three weeks, I think, but I never checked to see what it was, even though we confirmed with Tiny about that the sample they sent back to us was the right color so i assumed the roll that they sent us was the same color but the only night that i actually got to work on the car to try and finish the wrap was the night before i left for slam enough and that's when we found out it's not the right color so ever since i've been pretty bummed about that and i'm not sure what i was going to do going forward i had a couple options of what i was going to do the first option was now that the color is offered on the tiny bot website i was going to take a chance on it again getting it ordered and hopefully it was the same color and if it is then i guess i'll just finish it second option is a couple friends told me about o'reilly's color match program thing where they would scan the color and they can color match that put it in the spray paint had a couple friends that's done it and they said it's pretty much almost spot on so if that works then i might just do that then there's a third option where I'm just going to have to just leave it as it is. I won't even finish the rest of the car. Just enjoy the car. what it is right now. The whole idea why I started this, I had a certain vision to do an Itasha design. By the way, I haven't started on the Itasha design because this whole thing has been a mess right now. Again, I had a vision to do an Itasha design. It was going to be a shop car per se for an anime brand that I was going to start up. This brand I was going to start up is basically like any other anime brand, just selling stickers, shirts, whatever merchandise. If I could get that going, I wanted to have a booth start going to car shows more and vendoring at car shows or any car events. The idea was my car was going to be at the booth with an Itasha design and it could be a big advertising piece to the brand. My plan's kind of ruined, and the biggest downfall to all of this is I'm basically out of money for the car. Hopefully I'll be able to make some more money again so that I can put it towards the car or at least have any Tasha design on it, especially if it's going to be advertising for the anime brand. 
once I get this brand going, I would love for you all to show some support, buying some merch, whatever products that I might be having at the time, as that could be another way to try and save some money and put towards the car and also towards the brand as well. But thank you all for watching this video. Hopefully I'll see you at the next one.